So we got how Vin Diesel exposed the Rock's fragile Over ego. Over the past 30 Patrick, years, CC. Dwayne the Rock Johnson carefully like crafted a larger than life superhero persona that wakes up earlier than anyone, eats more than anyone, works out harder than anyone, has more success than anyone, and yet still is a gentle, lovable family man. On the big screen, he always beats up the bad guys, never dies, and every movie ends happily ever after. You know, The Rock has like a new, a, a no lose clause, like in every movie he he literally signs or has like a thing that the, the, the writers cannot make him die or cannot make him lose or something like that bro he has something like that persona is unsustainable and in 2016 the rock made one decision that he deeply regretted this decision slowly started the unraveling of his career and reputation you see there was only one man yeah. in hollywood who had an edge on the rock and that was vin, vin diesel. diesel vin had the multicultural appeal the rough and tough exterior with a soft side that people adored. And to put the icing on the cake, he has just a little more box office success. Ooh. Vin Diesel made Dwayne Johnson's blood boil. No matter how hard The Rock worked, Vin just seemed to have one up on him. And Which Vin is crazy. loved to rub it in Dwayne's face. Today we're going to deep dive into the Shout ultimate out, ego war between two of Hollywood's beloved bald badasses. The only battle where The Rock could not control the outcome. In two in 2004, The Rock's Hollywood career was not <laughs> going to plan. Crazy. He quit wrestling to go into acting full time, but failed to hit big. From 2004 to 2006, he starred Walking in Walking Tall. Tall, which was received well by fans, Fire but hated movie. by critics. He had throwaway roles in the crime comedy Be Cool and the film adaptation of the popular video game Doom, which failed to break that. even financially. Yeah. He had the comedy thriller Southland Tales Never and his that. first lead acting role in Gridiron Gang, that was which a good performed movie. a little bit better financially, but none of these films indicated that The Rock had a promising film career ahead of him. Even though he saw himself becoming an action star, Shout he out was game only plan. finding success in ah, kid-friendly films no, like I didn't Walt Disney's this. I didn't pre-watch this. I swear I didn't pre-watch this. I didn't pre-watch this. I didn't pre-watch this. I was just saying the game plan was the first movie from The Rock that I ever loved. So... I just said it. That's crazy, though. Plan and race to Wichita Mountain, along with Get Smart and Tooth Fairy, all of which I've made over one hundred million dollars at the box office. Mm -hmm. In addition to The Rock's career looking unpredictable, the Fast and Furious franchise needed a rebrand if they wanted to see increased box office success. The first three films, which many diehard fans of the series consider to be the best, yes, yes. I'm not gonna lie to y'all. This one right here in the middle is my favorite Fast and the Furious movie. Too fast, too fast, too fear, too furious. I'm too fast for y'all. Sorry, y'all particularly Tokyo Drift, all were centered around car culture and attracted car enthusiasts. Back Tokyo when Drift the series was a fire paid one, attention to detail, I love how they show us Dom approaching the turn, downshifting to second, and then clutch popping to break the wheels loose for the drift. Man, I wish they still made movies like this. The fourth film, Fast and Furious, still featured many elements of street racing culture, Failed but the, box office. the action scenes to a new level. Explosions, foot chases, fighting crime, this was a test to see if they could slowly move away from car culture and it was a big hit securing 360 oh, million Didn't dollars at the worldwide box office making it Wait, the I most that one successful film Hold of on. the franchise at that point I thought that it's one also flopped. important to understand that vin diesel was the main character of the very first film then he denied to participate in the second film and only made a minor cameo in the third film which but is came crazy back strong though because like i feel like too Fast, Too Furious made so much sense without Vin Diesel that I can't see him being in it. In the fourth film to a huge success. I'm not suggesting Vin Diesel is the reason why the fourth film was so successful, but from there he became an integral part of the production and storylines. Vin did. Diesel's production <laughs> company, One Race Films, took the reins from Universal Pictures to maintain Wait creative a minute. control over future films. Diesel worked closely with Universal. screenwriter Chris Morgan to produce a story arc to further explore and develop his character. Diesel was clearly very passionate about 
about the franchise. He had been there from the beginning, and he felt like he knew what was best for the franchise going forward. This dynamic seemed to work well until another successful actor slash producer joined the Fast team Fast and felt five. his work ethic and vision was better than Vin's, which led to a feud that caused one of them to leave the franchise as a whole. But first, a quick word from today's sponsor. Join the millions of fans it that played on while developing the fifth iteration of the series, Universal deliberately departed from the street racing theme to transform the franchise Wait, into a Wait, who left? I'm trying to think. Who left for good? Because it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't Luda. It wasn't Paul. It wasn't Vin. It wasn't Tyrese. It wasn't Michelle. Like, I... Who left? It's an action series that happened it wasn't to have Han. a theme around cars. I don't know Universal his real name. did this I'm sorry, in Han. hopes of drawing in a larger, more mainstream audience that might otherwise be turned off by the heavy emphasis on cars and car culture. With just one car race, Fast Five is considered the transitional film in the series, placing greater focus it on action sequences. It does only have one car race. Holy shit! And bro, I think the one car race is at the end where he races Brian. Oh my god! Gunfights and the central heist. Fast Five follows Dominic Toretto after he is freed from a prison transport bus by Brian and his sister Mia. Together they what, flee to leaves? Rio de Janeiro to avoid capture. In Rio, the protagonists consider carrying out a heist, targeting a corrupt businessman. They assemble a team that was reminiscent of what Marvel Studios would do with the Avengers. Avengers. Their team consists of characters who were introduced in previous films, including Tyrese's Roman Pierce, Ludacris's Tej Parker, Hey. Sung Kang's Han Lu, and Gal Gadot's Giselle Yashar. As the crew plan and execute the heist, they must contend with both local law enforcement and a ruthless federal agent, Luke Hobbs, Hobbs. portrayed by Dwayne Johnson, who is determined to bring them to justice. Not lie, this movies. role was crucial in revitalizing The Rock's career. In 2010, he decided he was going to risk everything. No more family-friendly movies, shave his head bald, and magically put on 30 pounds of lean muscle to depict himself as the intimidating badass that audiences hadn't seen since his wrestling days. <laughs> Luckily for him, People's it didn't eyebrow. take long for him to land this hit. Not only was he cast in the genre he so greatly desired, but he was also an antagonist, which is extremely uncharacteristic for The Rock. For the first time in the franchise's history, Fast Five received overwhelmingly positive reviews, mainly due to its adrenaline-pumping action sequences, jaw-dropping stunts, and great acting performances. It secured 640 million million in the worldwide box office, which was over double the previous film's revenue. Plus, Fast Five is widely regarded by fans and critics as the best one of the series. Yeah, I've heard a, a lot of people Empire say that. Magazine praised Johnson's performance, saying, how to reignite an aging franchise? Drop the rock on it. Dwayne Johnson hulks through the movie, leaving testosterone trails in his wake. It was oh, overwhelmingly what? agreed upon <laughs> that The Rock's Luke Hobbs was the perfect dance partner for Vin Diesel's Dominic Toretto. And the studio delved deeper into their complex relationship Fast with Fast and Furious 6. The film picks up where Fast Fire 5 movie. left off, with Toretto, O'Connor, and their crew living as fugitives following their successful one heist in Rio de Janeiro. Had, like, the little the story thing unfolds that, like, as people, Hobbs like, recruits little Dominic car. and his team to help take down Everybody, a skilled that mercenary viral, organization led by Owen name. Shaw, who is wreaking havoc across Europe. In exchange for full pardons, the crew agrees to join forces with Hobbs to stop Shaw who has assembled a team of highly skilled drivers that and thing. operatives. To label the film as a success would be an understatement. <laughs> Fast and Furious 6 saw similar positive reviews to its predecessor and grossed over $788 million Damn. worldwide. Even more. Furious 7 would be filmed immediately after Fast 6 with Big a one. single story running through both films. Vin Diesel confirmed- Also, Paul Walker dies. So this one probably, I, I don't remember if this one had the biggest box that the box screenplay office. for the sixth installment needed to be split, with writing for the two films occurring simultaneously. We have to pay off this story. We have to service all of these character relationships. And when we started mapping all that out, it just went beyond 110 pages. The studio said, you can't fit all that story in one damn movie. Despite being filmed back to back, Furious 7 came out years later in 2015. The film follows Dom and his team as they face off against a new enemy, Dex 
Deckard Shaw, who seeks revenge for his brother. After a devastating attack on their home, the team sets out to find Deckard, who is hunting them down one by one. And this Furious is how they 7 fix received the generally too. positive reviews from critics and audiences alike. The film was praised for its thrilling action sequences, emotional depth, and heartfelt tribute to Paul Walker, who tragically passed away midway through filming. At the box office, Furious yeah. 7 would be the first film in the franchise to surpass $1 billion, grossing over $1.5 billion worldwide. And despite Vin Pretty Diesel sure and The Rock like. being considered <laughs> equally as important to the Fast franchise, outside of the series, they had drastically different careers. Wow. Johnson became one of the highest paid action stars because of the series. The same can't be said for Diesel. Johnson appeared in several blockbuster films like Journey 2, The Mysterious Island, G.I. Joe, Retaliation, Hercules, and San Andreas, all Not of which gonna surpassed lie, I've $200 only watched million out of those the worldwide three movies. box office. Before. Diesel, on the other hand, struggled to find anything substantial. Babylon AD bombed at the box office and I was never destroyed even by film movie. critics. The Chronicles of Riddick and Riddick, the second and third installments like these, of the Chronicles though. of Riddick franchise, left fans with mixed opinions. <laughs> the last Witch Hunter didn't make enough to break even at the box office Damn. and receive less than stellar reviews. Triple X Return of Xander Cage, the third installment okay in the Triple X film series, stood out as the only film in his filmography outside of the Fast and Furious franchise to break even at the box office, grossing over $346 million worldwide. Yeah. For Johnson, it was the complete opposite. Nearly every film he starred in in the 2010s was a box office success. On top of that, he even made a brief return to the wrestling ring. The Rock's Hollywood takeover was a huge success, and it kind of made the Fast and Furious franchise seem like it was a second priority to him. His overwhelming success in Hollywood may have made him feel like he knew the right way to do things and maybe he should call the shots. On the oh. other hand, the franchise was seemingly all that Vin Diesel had, which understandably made him super protective over the creative vision. But The Rock followed Vin's lead for long enough and he was tired of it. So he decided oh. to make an Instagram post that he would later deeply regret. Bro, what? I, I don't remember any of this. On August 8th, 2016, Johnson posted a lengthy Oh, nigga. The now deleted Instagram post in which he praised his female co stars as well as the fate of the Furious crew, but called out some of his male co stars without referring to anyone by name. There's no other franchise that gets my blood boiling more than this one, Johnson wrote. My female co stars are always amazing, and I love them. My male co stars, however, are a oh, different story. Shit, dude. Some conduct Not themselves candy as ass. stand up <laughs> men and true professionals while others don't. The ones that don't are too chicken sh to do anything about it anyway. Candy asses. When you watch <laughs> this movie next April and it seems like I'm not acting in some of the scenes and my blood is legit boiling, you're right. An actor basically denouncing a film that they are supposed to be promoting is extremely rare. I mean, he set it up for people to go in there with a negative mindset. This was extremely uncharacteristic for The Rock. I mean, what about family? You know, the word that was said 81 times in the Fast franchise? The media was in a frenzy trying to figure out what co-star The Rock was talking about. Fans were able to rule out Tyrese Gibson after he posted a video of The Rock singing to his Damn nigga, you got a big ass boogie dog! able to rule out dog? Tyrese Gibson God, yeah! Big ass boogie, bro. God, he posted wait. a video of The Rock singing Sorry, to bro. his nine year old daughter to to. with the caption DJ happens to be one of the most humble, down to earth, and professional people I've ever worked with. More importantly, he's my brother. We have never had a problem and will never have a problem. Now you have to remember that. I think I remember this where it, um, where everyone thought it was Tyrese and then he posted that. The Fast series is one of the most successful global film franchises of all time. So while this may seem like menial drama, the media knew they had a juicy story on their hands. And mm -hmm. it seems like they amplified the drama as various media outlets were reaching out to anyone who worked on the Fast series to get a quote and further this story. TMZ posted another article confirming that Johnson's social media rant was targeted at Vin Diesel. A quote production source said the pair uh -oh. reported butt heads in part because Vin is a producer and has made decisions that didn't sit well with the former wrestling champ. 
Another source explained that Vin was having problems with The Rock because he kept showing up late for production, sometimes failing to show up at all. However, there were other reports that essentially said the exact opposite, that Vin Diesel was the one who was acting like a diva, specifically during the filming of Fast 7. I heard that too. Vin spent a whole day in his trailer one day, a source told The Hollywood Reporter. That Another is, source told- That is such a run-on sentence, spent a whole I day almost had a his trailer fucking one stroke day. reading was, that. I almost had a stroke listening to it. Vin spent a whole day in his trailer one day. <laughs> oh my gosh. It could have been like Vince or uh, Vin once spent a whole day in his trailer. A source told The Hollywood Reporter. Another source told Page Six that Diesel was constantly late when we worked together. The source added that Diesel acted like a diva and has held up production before, and that it's not surprising that he's the one The Rock is calling out. It's tough to know if there was actually animosity behind the scenes and now the staff is essentially choosing sides, or if these sources were just the PR teams from both actors trying to deflect blame and responsibility. Despite the animosity between them, Diesel and John Johnson allegedly met on August 9th, one day after The Rock's initial Instagram post, on the Atlanta set to hash out their differences. Partly because tensions were running so high, it was almost impossible to shoot scenes. Johnson seemingly addressed the issue in another Instagram post on August 11th. You guys reading this know how much I believe in the idea of team effort. That means respecting every person, their time, and their value when they step onto my set or partner with our production company. And like with any team, that's a family. There's gonna be a conflict. Family is going to have differences of opinion and fundamental core beliefs. To me, conflict can be a good thing when it's followed by great resolution. I was raised on healthy conflict and welcome it. And like okay. with any family, we get better from it. At the end of the day, me and the F8 co-stars all agree on the most important thing, delivering an incredible movie to the world. While their co-stars initially remained silent about the situation, other cast members made their alliances clear. On August 12th, Tyrese posted two photos of himself with Vin Diesel, along with a lengthy <laughs> message referring to him as his brother. Ludacris posted a throwback photo, including several of his Fast and Furious co-stars, minus- It's cause like, bro, okay. The thing is, bro, if they gotta choose sides, a lot of them are gonna choose Vin, bro. And you know why? Because they've been doing it with Vin longer than you, bro. You're the new guy. Just saying. The Rock. After the filming concluded, the neither new guy. Johnson nor Diesel mentioned the feud for months. On April 4th, The Fate of the Furious had its world premiere in Berlin, during which fans and who watched the film the noticed that Johnson up. and Diesel barely shared any scenes together, and in the ones they did, it looked like they may not have shot them together, but the fans That's weren't true. even crazy for thinking this. The Rock confirmed people's speculation in an interview with Rolling Stone. That oh, is correct. Shit. We were not in any scenes together. He added that the pair had spoken to each other on set, which included an important face-to-face -face meeting in his trailer. And what I came to realize is that we have a fundamental difference in philosophies on how we approach movie making and collaborating. It took me some time, but I'm grateful for that clarity, whether we work together again or not. What's crazy is it had been eight months since The Rock initially started this feud with Vin Diesel, and Vin never addressed it. And when Vin finally did decide to speak up, it made The Rock angrier than before. On April 7th, 2017, oh, Diesel shit. addressed his rumored feud with Johnson during an interview with USA Today. I don't think the world really realizes how close we are in a weird way. I think some things may be blown out of proportion. I don't think that was his intention. I know he appreciates how much I work this franchise. In my house, he's Uncle Dwayne. While there was creative tension on set, Diesel took responsibility for any hiccups as a producer. I protect the franchise. Oh. I I protect Shit. Every He's gonna be like, oh, you protected me? Everybody. Including you protected Dwayne. me. I protected Dwayne more than he'll ever know, and it doesn't. Oh, you protected me, John Brody. All right, let's stop him. I'm he doesn't have to know, but he appreciates it. He knows it. Dwayne has only got one Vin in his life. Dwayne Johnson only has one big brother in this film world, and that's me. When at oh shit, <laughs> yo. Asked if the pair had hugged it out and made amends, Diesel responded, "Always, always, always. I'm always rooting for Dwayne. I'm the first." multicultural megastar in Hollywood. They didn't exist. To see another multicultural star come up is something I am very proud of. I'm always rooting Dwayne on. At this point, it became quite evident- That kind of does feel like uh, passive aggressiveness, Dwayne. <laughs> I meant Vin. <laughs> that this feud is quite the ego battle. Because 
While Vin's statement seems positive, there is definitely a hint of animosity. He's essentially That's trying to lil bro the rock, which is essentially <laughs> treating him like he is inferior he or has a lower dictionary. social status. Even Probably a lot of people don't even know what that meant. That's the craziest part he had to pull up Urban Dictionary. No, they are nearly tied when considering worldwide box office performance, but Vin has just enough more success to be able to flex on The Rock. Not to mention, he achieved that in 16 less films. I was just about to Despite say, Despite Vin's movies. sarcastic remarks, The Rock chose not to respond. What nobody knew at the time was The Rock was so fed up with Vin Diesel at this point that he decided to walk away from the Fast franchise. But first, he had an obligation to complete the next Fast spinoff, Hobbs and Shaw. Hobbs and Shaw is a buddy comedy action film where Dwayne Johnson oh, and Jason Rock Statham left. reprise their roles oh, as Luke true. Hobbs and Deckard Shaw. Without up. Vin Diesel and the other characters from the main franchise, Johnson and Statham received much needed breathing room to fully flesh out their characters. Hobbs and Shaw was a huge commercial success, earning over $760 million oh, boy, worldwide. It. it was also around this time that the Wall Street Journal reported that Vin Diesel and The Rock both have contractual clauses that explicitly say they cannot lose a fight I said that at the beginning of the video. The Rock has a clause that says he can't lose. <laughs> Bro, and I didn't know Vin Diesel had it too. Oh my gosh. That's why in the first, in, in, in Fast Five, they fought each other and it just ended in a stalemate because they both can't lose. In movies, Michael Fattel, a producer, confirmed that fight scenes were choreographed beforehand to ensure they didn't end up too one-sided. During a scene in 2017's Fate of the Furious, Dwayne Johnson apparently had the script tweaked to have his character sit down on the floor instead of lying after taking a beating during one fight, because The Rock never lays down. It was reports <laughs> like this that slowly chipped away at The Rock's near-perfect reputation, but nobody <laughs> seemed to criticize Vin Diesel for doing the exact same thing and perhaps that bothered Dwayne even more. During the promotion for F9, Diesel did an interview with Men's Health where he admitted to using tough love on set when it came to Johnson's portrayal of Hobbs. It was a tough character to embody, the Hobbs character. My approach at the time was a lot of tough love to assist in getting that performance where it needed to be. As a producer to say, okay, we're gonna take Dwayne Johnson, who's associated with wrestling, and we're going to force this cinematic world, audience members, Members to regard his character as someone that they don't know. Hobbs hits you like a ton of bricks. That's something I'm proud of. Yet again, on the surface, it seems like Vin is praising The Rock, but it could be interpreted that he is literally taking credit for Johnson's role. He's basically saying that if he wasn't the producer, then Dwayne would not have performed the role as Hobbs good enough. What we know for a fact is that The Rock was not very fond of Vin's comments. Telling Vanity uh -oh. Fair, one part of me feels like there's no way I would would dignify any of that bull with an answer. The Rock then addressed uh -oh. the Instagram post that he made in 2016, five years ago, that started this whole feud. He said the post caused a firestorm, yet interestingly enough, it was as if every single crew member found their way to me and either quietly thanked me or sent me a note. But yeah, it wasn't my best day. He said, I shouldn't have shared that, because at the end of the day, that goes against my DNA. I don't share things like that, and I take care of that kind of bullshit away from the public. They don't need to know that. That's why I say it wasn't my best day. He stood behind his previous comments, but he did reiterate that sharing his displeasure for Vin Diesel was not the right thing to do. He mentioned again the alleged meeting with Vin in his trailer, where he said that him and Diesel are uh -oh. philosophically two different people, and we approach the business of movie making in two very different ways. Still, Johnson held resentment towards his co-star, and he denounced Diesel's big brother comments. I've been around the block a lot of times. Unlike him, I did not come from the world of theater. And you know, I came up differently and was raised differently. And I came from a completely different culture and environment. And I go into every project giving it my all. And if oh, I feel shit. that there's some things that need to be squared away and handled and taken care of, then I do it. And it's just that simple. So when I read that, just like everybody else, I laughed. I laughed hard. Clearly, whatever happened between Johnson and Diesel was never really resolved. And as future 
films centered more around Vin Diesel, The Rock decided to make his exit. In July of 2021, mm. Johnson revealed to the world that he would not be returning to the main franchise while speaking to The Hollywood Reporter. I wish them well on Fast 9, and I wish them the best of luck on Fast 10 and Fast 11 and the rest of the Fast and Furious movies they do that will be without me. And four months after Damn. Johnson said that he's never coming back, Vin Diesel made an Instagram post My where he brother. begged him <laughs> To rejoin the franchise. My oh little my brother God. Dwayne. The time has come. The world awaits the finale of Fast 10. As you know, my children refer to you as Uncle Dwayne in my house. There is That's not so a daddy. holiday that goes by that they and you don't send well wishes, but the time has come. I say this out of love, but you must show up. Do not leave the franchise idle. You have a very important role to play. Hobbs can't be played by no other. I hope that you rise to the occasion and fulfill your destiny. Fulfill your destiny. The Rock was tired of being lil broed by <laughs> Fulfill your destiny is fucking crazy. <laughs> Vin Diesel, and it really seems like Vin is continuing to troll him. Saying The Rock needs to fulfill his destiny <laughs> is making it seem like The Rock playing this role for the seventh time is like some sort of major career milestone, as if his movie career would crash and burn if he was not in Fast 10. This post made by Vin Diesel backfired, and it pushed The Rock even further away. Johnson claimed he was very surprised by Vin's recent post during an interview with CNN. This oh, past shit. June, when Vin and I actually connected, not over social media, I told him directly and privately that I would not be returning to the franchise. I was firm yet cordial with my words and said that I would always be supportive of the cast and always root for the franchise to be successful, but that there was no chance I would return. He specifically didn't like how Vin mentioned his children in the post. I guess he's not Uncle Dwayne after all. Unfortunately for The Rock, reality slapped him in the face. It became abundantly clear that The Rock needed the Fast franchise more than he realized. Oh, in 2021, Dwayne appeared opposite Emily Blunt in the fantasy I've adventure never film that. Jungle Cruise, which was a box office bomb. With an <laughs> estimated combined production and promotional cost of $365 million, the I, I film needed to I gross around $500 that, million dollars worldwide in order to break even, but Damn. fell short at $221 million. Then Johnson appeared oh, in another fuck, box office bomb in the form of Black Louise. Adam, a 2022 superhero film that Variety estimated needed $600 million to break even. Falling short once again at $393 million Black Adam worldwide. Wasn't a good movie, though. The failure of Black Adam was particularly bothersome for fans because he used his status to obtain a classic Marvel story that had never been brought to the big screen, only to dilute the character and turn him into another movie stroking The Rock's ego. Black Adam yeah. was supposed to be a dark, sinister Wait, did he say Marvel? I thought the Black, reason why the Black Adam DC? Marvel Cinematic Universe has know, become Tabby, such a massive know. success around the world is because of how all of the characters know can tie together. Right. The Rock did not care about while, how the so character fits in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. He wants to be the universe. But The Rock's universe is a repetitive, predictable movie where he plays the macho man with a kind heart who never loses a fight, never dies, and always concludes with a happy ending. People were simply fed up with The Rock and the way he ruined Black Adam, which led to people comfortably and confidently just speaking out oh, about all of the, the other Rock things they despised about him, like his tendency to tell absurd lies. When it comes to food, I knew diet, about the lie and his thing. health and wellness, he seems to exaggerate quite a bit. I can tell you with a little bit of uncertainty because I failed. I've seen like other videos of like people exposing The Rock's lies. It's it's kind of insane. And the fact that I saw another video where it shows that like The Rock cannot choose a side. And that was even crazy. Math. I was probably at that time ingesting about anywhere between six to well, I would say possible almost 8,000 calories a day. He set the internet on fire when he claimed that he eats six to 8,000 calories per day. For someone as dedicated as he is to his diet and exercise, achieving a near perfect physique at 52 years old, he should know exactly how much he is eating per day. But countless experts were just not convinced that The Rock was telling the truth. I can tell you there is no way The Rock burns off enough calories to average six to 8,000 calories a day and look like this. If he actually ate those kind of calories, six to 8,000 a day, he would be a hundred pounds overweight. There is no way he eats this much. Naturally, this opened the <laughs> door for people to discuss the other elephant in the room. Does The Rock use steroids? After all, he's 52 years old, 200. I mean, bro, 52 looking like that is, is 
quite an achievement. I'm not gonna lie. Like, part of me really hopes that The Rock doesn't use steroids for real, and this is just really him working out all the time. But... 160 pounds with only 7 calories body a fat, day? a physique that most people half his age couldn't achieve naturally. He admitted to using steroids for two weeks when he was 18 and then never touched them again. And yet, health experts and previous steroid users were convinced he was lying. The Rock is not natural, okay? The Rock is, he's not a patient of mine, so I don't worry about getting sued. Yeah, we're gonna be talking about what steroid cycle- God! Look at this nigga's, yo, they, let me tell you something about these trap shits, man. Batista? Batista muscles. Look at this. Like, Batista's traps always used to make me want to throw up, bruh. I even told... <laughs> I even told my girl, because she <laughs> asked her, I was like, are you going to work out your traps? And she was like, yeah. I was like, okay, just please don't make them look like Batista's. <laughs> I think The Rock uses. Perhaps I'm crushing people's dreams saying I don't believe The Rock's natural, but hey, here in the real world, you don't look like The Rock at 50 without taking something. One of the more strange lies that The Rock told was when he tried to convince the world that he never had In-N-Out Burger three times. Bro, you know what's crazy? This was in that one of those videos I was talking about where like I've seen videos of where they say that like, um, how they show like The Rock lies about a lot of shit. And I saw a lot of videos of like where they say how The Rock can't choose a side. Like he always, like he, he, he almost always dodges choosing a side. He wants to stay neutral as much as possible, but it's getting annoying because it's like, bro, just pick a fucking side, right? The in and out thing was one of the biggest things that I saw. Cause he said, no, nah, I've never had an in and out burger. In 2017, The and Rock this, posted in. I was gonna mention the picture with the in and out guys. This, this is the picture I was going to talk about, bro. This nigga said, I've never had an In-N-Out burger and has a picture with In-N-Out guys. Why are you lying? An Instagram photo at the In-N-Out drive-thru with the caption, I've never been to In-N-Out before, and then goes on to describe his delicious meal. Then five years later, he posted a video seemingly forgetting about his 2017 experience. And the reason why this is history in the making is because this is the very first time that I have ever tried an In-N-Out burger. Fucking liar. Or In-N-Out fries, or anything from In-N-Out for that matter. Then 15 months later, he posted for the third time saying that this was his very first In-N-Out burger experience. Fucking this idiot. This is the third time he's done it. He keeps pretending that he's trying In-N-Out for the first time every <laughs> couple of years. Why? Why are you lying about that? <laughs> this was the video. <laughs> this was the video I was talking about. I forgot it was from fucking Boys Critical, bro. <laughs> you could just say, like, I love In-N-Out, so I'm going back to In-N-Out. Let's go. Can't wait for more In-N-Out. Why does it always have to be your first time? We know it's not. It appears that the first picture was actually his first time going. The second post was clearly an attempt to advertise his tequila brand. And the third mm -hmm. attempt was just, well, The Rock being The Rock. There is no exact reason as to why he lies about these things, but it seems to revolve so, around him being hyper-focused on creating this larger-than-life brand as The Rock. If you follow his Instagram, you will realize that The Rock wakes up earlier than anyone, eats more food than anyone, works out more than anyone, travels the world, does hundred million dollar movies. The Rock does everything bigger Let's and better, but he throws in little jokes and posts his Sunday cheat meals to let you know he is still human and you can relate to him. Then he can use that charm to sell you his newest movie, his tequila, tequila. the XFL, or whatever brand is paying him for an advertisement. He doesn't even seem like a human anymore. He seems like an AI version of this Dwayne Johnson created in a lab to be a walking, talking advertisement, and people just simply got tired of it. Babe, After the two colossal about. movie failures him and his public reputation at an all-time low, of all The Rock conveniently deals. decided to settle his differences with his big bro, Vin Diesel. After he said he never wanted to work on the Fast franchise again, and that he and Vin Diesel are just fundamentally two different men who will never see eye to eye, he posted a video on Instagram saying he was going to return turn for Fast X. So I am 100% confirming to you guys around the world that yes, it is true. Because Hobbs 
is back. <laughs> the Hobbs is back in the Fast and Furious <laughs> franchise. So in terms of the why, I think, you know, when you, d despite us having our differences, me and Vin, uh, you know, we've been like brothers for years. And despite having our differences, when you lead with the idea of number one, resolve, but then also. <laughs> this shit was so scripted. I felt like this shit was scripted, dog. So <laughs> you just think about the future and you think about plans that are much bigger than ourselves. When The Rock desperately needed a career revival the most, Vin <laughs> Diesel and the Fast franchise were happy to bring him back into the family. I guess this proves The Rock was Vin Diesel's little brother <laughs> after all. <laughs> Bro, it's so bad, bro. It was so bad how The Rock really played, or uh, how Vin Diesel really played him like this, bro. Somebody left a comment. <laughs> ah, yes, my favorite Marvel character in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Black Adam. <laughs> Come on, Patrick, bro. I, like, bro, I really fuck with you, Patrick, but bro, say Black Adam is Marvel is crazy. <laughs> Shout out Patrick CC, though, bro. These videos are amazing to watch. I love them.